once again, a 40-year uh, ex, now ex-Jehovah's Witness. I was born and raised into the Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, I left at age 40, and for very good reasons. And today, I told you in the last video that I wanted to share with you something that the Witnesses will never, ever share with you. The organization will never, ever admit to this. But I want to tell you, it's, an, it's kind of an insider secret. And it's the reason I left. <clears throat> you know, in the uh, early 80s, we were given a book. As you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, they have a lot of books and publications. And they come to your door with, say, a book like this, You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth. Well, <clears throat> in the early 80s, we got a book. It was very similar to this. It was a red book. And it said, Revelation, its grand climax at hand. And this book I treasured. I really treasured and I was really, really deep and zealous into the works of the Jehovah's Witnesses at that time. And what this book said was that 70 or 80 years after 1914, the end would come. So 70 or 80 years after 1914 would put you into the mid 80s, early 90s, you know, 1990s. And uh, the reason they said this was so was it was based out of a scripture in uh, Matthew, it was in Matthew 21 that said, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things occur. And what he was trying to say was that when you see food shortages and earthquakes and famines and all these things happening, in one generation, a generation being 70 or 80 years, when you see all these happening at once, people starving, wars, earthquakes, when you see all that happening, it said two, you're gonna see the end of the world. That's what the uh, Jehovah's Witness Bible says. So we were preaching. We weren't doing anything else. Why would we? If the world was going to end in my lifetime, 1980s, 85, 90, the world was going to be end, what, what use would I have of going to college and having an education for what? Why would I be so involved in making a career or having babies? Do you know a lot of witnesses, including myself? I didn't have a baby for 10 years, and it was by accident because I thought the world was going to end. Me and my wife thought the world was going to end. So what happens is you put everything on hold. You put your savings on hold. Why would you save? You're going to be throwing your money in the streets. Money's going to be worthless. Jehovah's going to rid the whole world of all the bad people. That's anyone who's not a Jehovah's Witness. That's Christians, Catholic, Buddhists, Hindus, everybody. Everybody. I don't care if you say you believe in Jesus or not. Anybody that hasn't come to know the name Jehovah is going to be cut off. Everyone. So that's what we were living towards. So at this time, we were really, really passionate, knocking on the doors and, hey, wake up. You know, the end's here. Look, it says when the fig tree changes and this happens, you know that summer's near. Likewise, look, when you see the tribulation and this, you know the end is near. And I was preaching and preaching with my whole heart because I'm a true seeker. And what happened was, well, I just want to tell you a little bit about this book again. This book came from their organization. This book was actually handed down from Jehovah to Jesus to the men in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, which is the faithful and discreet slave. They're called faithful and discreet slave because they're just slaves. You know, Jehovah sends the book down, it comes to Jesus, and they're just slaves. They just take the information that came down out of heaven, right off the, right off the, the uh, oven, right out of the oven, so to speak, and they put it on their printing presses and they ship it out to the world. They're called the faithful slave. And in the Bible, there's a scripture that said Jesus was going to appoint his faithful slaves over all his, his literature, all his, his, uh, his uh, works. So again, this book, this uh, revelation book, was handed down from Jehovah to Jesus into the organization, put on printing presses, and then distributed to the world. This is the accurate knowledge they talk about. Remember that first book I read, the, the You Can Live Forever in Paradise? One of the favorite scriptures they have when they come to your doors is John 17, 3. And John 17, 3 says, this means everlasting life. They're taking in knowledge of you and the one whom you set forth, Jesus Christ. So that's their scripture. They tell you at the door, you have to take in knowledge. 
They don't tell you it's Bible knowledge. They say it's Bible knowledge, but it's really watchtower knowledge. It's what they say that they got from Jehovah's own hand or Christ's own hand. So this is the accurate knowledge they got in the form. So I get this Revelation book. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to see the end of my time. And all of us brothers were getting up 4 and 5 in the morning and doing street witnessing and going to 7-Elevens and preaching and preaching and preaching. And we loved it. And it was wonderful. The end was going to come. We were going to see this paradise just any day. What happened? Well, the 90s came. And all of a sudden, I noticed that the information started to change in the Watchtower. The Watchtower is one of the Jehovah's Witnesses articles that come out, you know, bi-monthly. And there was an article that came out that said the generation is not the generation as we know it. And how the Witnesses say this is they say that the information now, Jehovah's given us more light. They said Jehovah's shedding more light on things. So the generation, the 70 or 80 years, now the Watchtower says it's not as we know it. It's not 70 or 80 years. And we're going to have some new information coming out of the assemblies. Now here's the disheartening thing for me. I was looking for that end to come in the 90s, early 90s. My dad was looking for it to come in the 75. My dad used to always say, by 75, boy, it'll be all over. And I was looking for it in the 90s. And as I did research, they've been looking for it all through the years. Jehovah's Witnesses have had all of these prophecies before 1914. 1914 was a prophecy. 1975 was a prophecy. The 30s were a prophecy. They have been prophesying for years. And do you know what the, the Bible says? If anyone prophesies and it doesn't come true, don't listen to these ones. So anyway, this new information comes out. Well, we all run to the assembly, you know, because that's where the new information comes from Brooklyn right out of the headquarters, and they say these big brothers get up there, you know, that you never met, and they said, we have new information from Jehovah. And they'd go in to try to re-explain this generation theory, philosophy they had, that they said was absolute truth, that they call accurate knowledge, that they, that they say that's knowledge that's gonna lead you to living on the paradise. Well, it changed. All of that changed, and many other things changed too, that, I don't have time to go into, but I will at a later point. But many things started to change. But I was disheartened. I felt like they lied to me. And I thought, why would all these millions of people rush to the, to the conventions and stuff to hear more of it? You know? And you know what really bugged me most of all? What really hurt me? There was no apology. They looked you right in the eye with a big smile. And they said, Jehovah has more light. We've got more light, brothers. Now you might wonder out there, how on earth would you follow such a thing? Why would millions of people? Well, that's what I'm telling you. You become fully indoctrinated by this religion. You totally give your thinking over to people in Brooklyn, New York that you never met. Fully, fully indoctrinated. And it's a shame because I watched five million people believe that this was absolute truth, and now guess what you can do with it? Throw it in the garbage. Go try to get a Revelation book at the Kingdom Hall now. Revelation, it's grand climax. Tell me you want the red one. It's a few years ago. Now see, it's no longer in print. How can truth no longer be in print? How can God's truth change in every, an unchanging God? and truths that are unchanging. How can they change? Well, a lot of people rushed right back, got the new literature, and now they have a new prophecy, which I won't even go into, it's so ridiculous. It's, it's just amazing that people just continue to blindly follow. Well, that's when I left, and I'm glad I did. There was no apology from this organization. There was no, we got it wrong. There was nothing. My savings, all my time, my education, my schooling, my job, everything was put on hold for this. And now I'm rebuilding my life. And I have to say, God has given me back what the locusts have eaten, and I'm happy. But I just want to share this with people. This is something that the Watchtower will never tell you. It's a secret within the organizations. These prophecies, they fall by the wayside. 
the people like me leave. Do you know what they say when a person like me leaves? Someone that's been disgruntled or says, you know, this isn't true, this doesn't make any sense. Do you know what happens? They say Jehovah's weeding out his organization. And aren't we happy that Jehovah's doing that? Isn't that wonderful? Jehovah's cleaning out his organization. That's sickening. That's very sickening. But that's that organization. That's just one more thing I wanted to share with you. Next, I want to talk with you about higher education and how they discard that. And I also want to talk along with that about the subjection principles that women would be an award of if they knew it. Uh, just a few more things that you'd never know unless you were Jehovah's Witness. A few more things that the Watchtower organization will never tell you. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.